How far or how close are plans to introduce bus rapid transit or BRT in Nairobi city? We are fast tracking the process. We are in this together. And do Kenyans understand that bus-based transport system? But easy buses in the stand up. Kama itaji conductor, itaji kamagera, itaji hustler, sisi tutaenda wapi. We have an interesting case study. We visited South Korea's capital city, Seoul, to find out how it implemented its BRT and how it works. If transport service is good, the, the demand always increases continuously. On this show, bus rapid transit, experience from Seoul City, and what it takes to achieve an efficient, reliable, and cost-effective system. Welcome, I'm your host Alex Chamwada, and we begin with our fact sheet. BRT, otherwise known as Bus Rapid Transport, is a public transport system designed to offer fast, comfortable and low-cost urban mobility compared to the conventional transport system that is prone to traffic. The first BRT system was the OC Transport System in Ottawa, Canada that became operational in 1973. It is estimated that traffic congestion in Nairobi costs the economy up to 37 billion shillings annually. The five basic elements that define BRT are Dedicated right-of-way, which ensures no delays in traffic Busway alignment, which keeps the BRT buses from parking areas Off-board fare collection Better intersection treatment at road junctions And platform-level boarding that makes it easy for passengers to board including the disabled Some of the cities that have operationalized the BRT system in Africa are Lagos, Nigeria Johannesburg, South Africa, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, Cape Town, South Africa, Marrakesh, Morocco, and Accra, Ghana. For the Tamwada Report, my name is Michael Zimaji. In Nairobi City, this is what you are likely to encounter on the highways leading into the city. And in the central business district, especially in busy areas like Tomboya Street, you are likely to be caught up in this, a free-for-all scenario. The anticipated mass rapid transit system is expected to solve the problem, and the bus component of the system, commonly known as the bus rapid transit system, is probably the most talked about. <laughs> Mtapenda hizo na kuja mpia. Kama itaji conductor, itaji kamagera, itaji hustler, sisi tutaenda wapi? Zita nisaidia, kama zita kuwa zinachukua watu, na fea itakuwa juu. Alafu zikuwe na standard moja ya kulipisha fea. On the thicker super highway, express lanes for buses only have been marked ahead of the arrival of BRT compliant buses for the pilot phase. You have to distinguish between a high capacity bus from a BRT. And some of the features, uh, BRT has uh, two doors on the right hand side. Yeah? That is a feature which is very clear and which must be complied with. The size of the BRT buses, we go into those kind of details, you know, measured to the, to the, to, you know, to the nearest millimeter. Because these are buses which must be aligned to the stations which we are trying to do. It has uh, driver-controlled safety gadgets. It is not just a driver getting in and driving these buses. Driver, uh, these BRTs have no steps. You are lying the entry um, basically to the ramp as you walk in. So with this, we shall be able to basically have a system which will be working and working very well. We have to introduce you know, all those uh, cash management systems uh, for the buses because it is not a matatu. It's, it's, it's basically a, a bus whereby as you walk in, you have electronic cash management system. The other key service in the mass rapid transit system will be the commuter rail. As you know, um, <clears throat> to start with, we decided that we required an integrated transport system whereby we bring the trains, but also to have the last mile, we have the buses as well. 
we engaged some parties in Spain for the trains uh, in what we call uh, the DMUs, the diesel multiple units. And already we have in negotiated uh, the purchase of 11 of those trains. We have sent technical teams uh, to Spain. We have sent teams to negotiate uh, on our behalf, multi-sectoral teams, uh, which involves ourselves, it involves Kenya Railways, it involves the Treasury, it involves the AG Attorney General, to make sure that we can quickly actualize uh, this uh, purchase of the DMUs, the diesel multiple units. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Transport has gazetted a task force on transition and transportation of public transport sector that co-opted the Nairobi Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, NAMATA, and the Federation of Public Transport Sector, which brings together the Matatu Owners Association, the Matatu Welfare Association, the Association of Matatu Operators, Matatu Transport Vehicles Association, Mount Kenya Matatu Owners Association, and the Association of Bus Operators in Kenya. We are in this together. Some of us are in it, and we can't, we cannot be displacing ourselves. So um, it's just an issue of getting ready. The city is bigger than each, any one of us. The, this country is progressing well, and we want to be a, a, a good example in, in, in transport provision, in transport services provision in, the, in this, this, this area. As you know, we had a very good transport system before, and we lost it. And it's high time we are telling people that uh, we would like to move with the government when there is will and political will at, it, at that to move with government to ensure that we actualize and bring together a good transport system. Our neighbors here at Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, they are already on the BRT. Why should Kenya be left um, and most of the projects that infrastructural and uh, public transport we have been ahead? But in this one, we really need to catch up so that at least we are able even to be at par even more. Anybody out there who is feels they are not part of this group and they ought to be, they can write to us and they'll be assessed just like we have assessed this group of six. So where is the process so far? According to the Principal Secretary for Housing and Urban Development, Charles Hinger, the process is at the contracting and budgeting phase for the commuter rail, BRT and metro buses. Regarding BRT, 32 buses for the pilot project will be imported from South Africa and 32 will be fabricated in Nairobi. In the BRT plan, there will be five corridors. Line 1, named Ndovu, will serve Limuru, Kangemi, the CBD, Imara Daima, Athi River and Kitengela. Line 2, named Simba, will serve Rongai, Bomas, Langata Road, CBD. Ruiru, Thika, and Kennel. Line 3, Christian Chui will serve Tala, Njiru, Dandora, Juja Road, the CBD, Gong Road, and Gong. Line 4, known as Kifaru, will serve Eastlands from Mamalusi Hospital Area, Donholm, Jogo Road, and the CBD. And Line 5, Onyati, will serve Ridgeways, Kiambu Road, Balozi, and Imara Daima. This is a multi-sectoral um, engagement. So even the county of Nairobi um, will be engaged uh, because you see, like, if you are trying to create certain corridors, um, we have to engage the county government to make sure we create those dedicated, you know, corridors. Uh, we also have, if you if you like, the wider Namata. These counties of uh, Kajiado, Machakos, Kiambu, and Morang which are also part of Namata, in addition to, to, to Nairobi. So all those will also be brought on board to make sure we have aligned processes. The question is, who will be importing the buses? We have had engagement with local uh, manufacturers, assemblers, to say this is just a pilot. Thereafter, we shall have open, uh, we have an open process that all these are manufacturers, are zebras, and I think there are about <coughs> almost nine in total. They can start now bring those buses or bring the components of those buses to be assembled locally. 
what is critically important is that we must bring BRT buses, buses which are compliant to BRT specifications. Let's now cross over to Seoul City in South Korea, a smart city that boasts of a successful BRT system. And to get a glimpse into the system, a visit at a center where traffic is controlled, monitored, and managed is a must. It is known as the TOPIS, or Transport Operation and Information Service. TOPIS manages Seoul's overall traffic by collecting traffic information from the bus management system, the transport card system, the unmanned camera surveillance system, and traffic-related authorities and institutions. Number one technology we need is the high-speed internet connections. So now we are utilizing 4G LTE together and to distribute uh, data to citizens and from citizens. In Seoul, public transit in general handles 65% of the transportation needs. Subways take 38.8%, private vehicles 22%, and taxis 6.8%. Shin Li, a professor of transport policies at the International School of Urban Sciences, the University of Seoul, says with proper planning, BRT can easily be integrated into the existing infrastructure. When we started it, uh, we uh, identified uh, five most uh, five busiest corridors mm. in terms of traffic mm. so most congested areas mm. they identified mm. but uh, in, in the form of corridors okay. uh, mm. but uh, in in korea I, I, it really depends on the the land ownership and right of way mm. so in some cities it's not really feasible there are cities I have looked in, uh, it's, it's not feasible, but in Seoul uh, it was possible to, uh, to secure right of way uh, in the median, in the median part of the, the road. Mm -hmm. uh, these are used exclusively by buses mm -hmm. and no other types of vehicles can use this lane, these lanes, yes. median lanes. Mm -hmm. uh. So, uh, and there is, uh, the, uh, there is a fine if you, if you use this lane and you're not, if you're not driving a bus. From the Korean experience, a good public transport system must be efficient, reliable and sustainable. Because of this information provision, people know uh, how long it will take from uh, door to door. Mm -hmm. People know before the travel mm -hmm. the exactly how long it will take by transport, public transportation. Mm -hmm. But it's not just a subway. Mm -hmm. it is well integrated with bus services. So because uh, fixed fixed route, rails are fixed on fixed routes. This cannot go really everywhere. Mm. Nowadays development is a very, very, uh, it's not linear. It's more interstic interstitial. So mm. it goes, uh, people live everywhere. Mm. And, and these were on fixed routes. So you can cover only up to some point. The rest should be carried, the rest of the transport demands should be met uh, by more flexible mode of transportation such as bus. Okay. Uh, so we have this hierarchy, hierarchy of urban transportation. So most people uh, take a subway, but uh, they would walk to the station, station, take subway, but then for, to their destination, they would transfer to bus service, to mm. bus. Mm. But here in Seoul, this integration has become has been made very, very smooth, mm. so you don't have to pay again. You, you pay just once, and uh, there is a very complicated formula amongst the transportation uh, providers. So uh, dividing this fare for the whole journey is left to them, to the providers. They would divide mm. uh, their revenues uh, by their own formula. Now, a mere BRT or just putting buses on the road is not good enough. The key to the success of public transportation depends on how competitive mm. uh, public transportation can be uh, in relation to private automobile. Find out why discipline is important right after the break. You are watching comparison between Nairobi City's transport system and that of Seoul City in South Korea. Remember, South Korea at some point had a chaotic system like what is witnessed in Nairobi City. but. What did South Korea do in order to solve the problem? It was the result of a very aggressive set of uh, transport policies. 
we had gone through uh, what, what we call bus reform uh, in, uh, in the early 1990s. In 1993, the, mayor, uh, the, the then mayor of Seoul, he, he really uh, executed what was, was, was called bus reform. It was uh, previously a privately owned uh, private market. The bus market was privatized. But uh, what he did was he converted it into semi-private bus operation. Mm. So uh, we still ma maintained the private ownership and private operation of the bus services. However, uh, the government, uh, the Seoul Metropolitan Government, uh, resumed their right to um, to uh, organize the bus, reorganize the bus routes, mm. the service routes, as well as bus fare. Mm -hmm. They saw that uh, this uh, fare system should be integrated, otherwise the public transportation cannot become competitive. Systems work well where there is discipline. Hence, behavioral change is important for Nairobi's envisaged mass transit system to work. There is need for behavioral change not only among motorists, but all road users, including pedestrians. If there are dedicated bus lanes, there would still be confusion if motorists do not observe the rule, for example. In South Korea, hefty penalties for traffic offenses have helped enforce discipline. I lived away from my country for more than 25 years and it was not like, it was not so orderly. People didn't used to abide by the rule. Mm. Uh, but when I came back after 25 years of absence, I, s I suddenly saw that uh, the does. general the attitude of people have changed. Uh -huh. uh. What do you but, I, I, but I believe the mm. penalty really works. Mm. In the United States, <laughs> where I also <laughs> lived for a long time, yeah. there is a lane dedicated to couples. So if, if you have an additional passenger in your car, you can use this lane. Mm. Now this has increased to two passengers, so mm. three, mm. three people, mm. occupancy three, uh, three people in a car. So there are lanes which are only, uh, which, which, which can be used by carpoolers. Mm. Um, and no one really uh, violates mm. this rule. And the reason, uh, I believe it is a very, very hefty fine they, they have there. Very hefty. Like uh, in, eight, in, the eight, in the late 80s, it was $1,000 if you are caught. Mm -hmm. So very hefty lane. But you're not always monitored, but even if, uh, you, even if there is a very small risk that you can be caught and have, uh, in a po be, be in a position to pay, have to pay $1,000, people try to avoid. The professor of transport told me when she visited Nairobi recently, this is what remained on her mind. It was a very, very beautiful city. <laughs> I really liked uh, the vegetation there and then very, somehow very lively atmosphere yeah. in Nairobi. I mm. loved it. And the food I ate, I, I loved everything. Mm -hmm. In terms of congestion, uh, I moved around in the central area mm. of the city and it was very, very congested. Mm. So at some time of the day and in some areas of uh, the city, uh, the congestion was very severe, so you, I, we could not tell uh, how, how much longer we have to be on the road. And uh, I have an uh, episode, we, uh, we arrived in Nairobi altogether, but there were a couple of VIPs. Mm. So they were transported separately by mm. car, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, were, we were transported by a bus. Uh, mm. I suppose the VIP <laughs> reached, uh, reached uh, our destination not just uh, 30 minutes late or mm. anything like that. He, they, they reached the hotel, I think, more than two hours later than us. So the VIP? The VIPs, yeah. uh, because they have somehow chosen a, a roads which were more congested <laughs> but our bus driver was very clever and <laughs> very experienced so, so so he knew where to go so the difference was that this was amazing the, the time difference was more than two hours yeah. so that that tell they told me that um, the travel time is very unpredictable in in kenya
<laughs> so, <laughs> so and then I, I also I, I was under the impression that uh, public transportation in, in people's perception uh, public transportation was not very reliable mm. in terms of time management mm. so uh, and this kind of situation in this kind of situation it will only encourage people to buy more cars mm -hmm. more private automobiles mm -hmm. there should be some prospect that you know public transportation can beat uh, auto private automobiles in, in, in some cases Generally, an efficient, reliable, and cost-effective public transport eventually becomes more attractive than private transport. If transport service is good, the, the demand always increases continuously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. some popular lines become even more crowded. That means that private automobile owners are converting continuously mm -hmm. converting mm -hmm. into public transportation. Yes. Korea is aware, of course, of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the challenges Kenya is facing in terms of uh, congestion and, and uh, uh, the congestions and the traffic uh, jams that are in Nairobi. And uh, a program which is called QUAFEC, Korea Africa Economic Cooperation. Uh, one of the projects that Korea is funding is the BRT. Uh, Korea is earmarking close to $60 million to support Kenya's uh, BRT and in, uh, what you call intelligent uh, transport system. Not only do you develop the BRT, but you are, you are, the way you manage your, 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 your entire uh, traffic must be intelligent. So it can be done and it's all about commitment, discipline and strong leadership. Vital lessons there from South Korea. And that's how we end our show today. Many thanks for watching and let's do it again next time, same channel. I'm Alex Chamada. Bye-bye.